FBI Director James Comey stated that there are Elton Simpsons out there that I have not found and I cannot see, followed by ISIL is a very popular fad among a lot of disturbed people. Or in the International Business Times, terrorism and national security experts said the U.S. can expect more of these ISIS-inspired attacks at home. These statements have far-reaching implications for both the American public and the American Muslim community. American police and security officials on alert tonight after a terror message. ISIS, the group ravaging Iraq and Syria, renewing its call to followers to launch attacks here in the U.S. Fear-mongering and headline jockeying aside, has ISIS really arrived in America? 30-year-old Elton Simpson is reported to have exchanged messages about the Garland event with an ISIS recruiter over Twitter. And in another bizarre and twisted story with Pamela Geller, the hostess of the Garland event, coincidentally or not at the epicenter, Osama Rahim, a 26-year-old security guard, was fatally shot by police while plotting to behead her and or police officers. The complete facts remain to be seen. How many American Muslims have joined or attempted to join ISIS? On February 12th of this year, intelligence officials stated their belief that 150 American citizens and residents have traveled or attempted to travel to Syria as foreign fighters. And to be clear, 150 is 150 too many. But there are 4.82 million American Muslims. So 150 is 0.003%. And of that 0.003%, according to NPR, very few of the ISIS suspects stand accused of plotting to attack the homeland. And the case in Massachusetts is the exception rather than the rule. So most of the known recruits are chasing misguided love, adventure, and fraternity, while the four deranged individuals of recent notoriety are rare, rare exceptions. Do these numbers and statistics bear out the sweeping and inflammatory claims that incite to fear and bigotry? Some perspective. The participants in the recent Texas biker shootout are more numerous. Do they represent you? Do they represent the American community? But what about those invisible Elton Simpsons out there? This is the claim of well-known Islamophobes. The claim that Muslims may pretend to be normal citizens, but behind highly calculated false personas, they're all terrorist sympathizers. There is no problem within our borders significantly. Let's, let, let's look at what happened in <laughs> Dallas, Texas, for example, right? Two men who are already known to the FBI, who are already radicalized, attacked an event. No American Muslim organization issued any meaningful statement of protest against the event. These two men did not even bring up radical ideas in their mosque. Why? Because they the knew the FBI minute they would bring them up, they would be reported. ISIS has a presence and in all 50 states. FBI, we have a little FBI, bit of an issue. So how can we know if the majority or a plurality or even a statistically significant portion of American Muslims sympathize or identify or could be moved to act by ISIS? Let's try this. What do American Muslim leaders have to say about ISIS? This woman who went on uh, television, on YouTube, to speak to these people that are holding her son hostage, she had a better understanding of Islam as a non-Muslim than these people in, uh, in Iraq have. She said, I studied your religion, and your religion says that one soul is not held to account for what other souls do. And she said, my son's not responsible for what American foreign policy does. And then she said, and then I read that your prophet Muhammad, he had amnesty and he, and he forgave people. So I'm asking for my son back. What do American Muslim organizations and institutions say about ISIS? The U.S. Council of Muslim Organizations has consistently and unequivocally condemned ISIS and similar groups' violent extremist ideology and actions. We assert that these groups have never represented Islam and Muslims. The Islamic Society of North America stated, we condemn the continued un-Islamic behavior of ISIS. We will continue to reiterate that their actions have no basis in the teachings of Islam. What other group in America is not taken for face value? What other group publicly proclaims their views and the media and others decide, nope, that's not what they really think? Now, let's put all of this ISIS in America hysteria in context. 
Let's put it in the context of American society. In America, on average, 30,000 people are shot fatally each year. In the two years after Sandy Hook, there were 95 school shootings, an average of about one per week. In April, USA Today released a report, Behind the Bloodshed, the untold story of America's mass killings. This report demonstrated that there is a mass killing every two weeks, and one in four of the victims are close family members of the assailant. Since 1999, at minimum, 76 unarmed people of color have been killed by the police. At the same time, the U.S. contains 5% of the world's population and 25% of the world's prisoners. These statistics are not an attempt to justify the violent and murderous actions of anyone, ISIS affiliated or otherwise. But really, the threat from ISIS in America is less than a grain of sand compared to the ocean of violence and murder we Americans have been allowing ourselves and our children to marinate in for decades. On edge, expecting hundreds to gather for a controversial cartoon contest depicting the Prophet Muhammad right outside this Phoenix mosque. I noticed that you are armed. Yes, ma'am. That is a nine millimeter Ruger and it is loaded and there is a round in the chamber. I have another weapon in my pocket. Why have you come out here armed like this and, and shown it off? I am out here to show that the United States has the First Amendment and the Second Amendment rights and that these people are unnoticed. We're not afraid of them. They want to promote their terrorism, they can do it somewhere else, not in this state, not this country. Warren, who doesn't want to give his last name, heard about the rally, like hundreds of others, after this invitation went out on Facebook. The organizer, John Ritzheimer, says this event is in response to what happened in Garland, Texas, three weeks ago. Years of terror attacks here at home. My next guest was targeted by ISIS after he condemned the Charlie Hebdo attacks in Paris, but he says another group scares him more than ISIS. I mean, now is Professor Yasser Kwadi of Rhodes College in Memphis. Why are you more afraid of one group than the other, and which group is that? Uh, well done, first, thanks for having me on the show. Um, the fact of the matter is I've been getting uh, death threats from two camps for the last few years. Uh, around three and a half years ago, uh, certain segments of uh, our own American public uh, who were misinformed about the Islamic faith and who assumed that um, every Muslim is somehow a potential terrorist uh, they developed certain ideas about me based on a doctored audio clip and uh, there is this there are a number of, of far-right radical websites that are claiming that I'm some type of stealth jihadist preacher mm. and based on that they launched a campaign against my employer to fire me uh, they inundated me with uh, hate mail and yes some threats as well the FBI got involved and uh, you know uh, had to deal with that type of rhetoric uh, and then a few days ago, 10 days ago, ISIS also threatened me because I was criticizing them. So I'm kind of getting threats from uh, both sides of the spectrum. We have certain misinformed Americans and we also have certain uh, radical Muslims and the both of them are projecting their fears of the other. Charles Lister of the Brookings Institute said about ISIS in an April 2015 interview, they feed off of tension and they need to be on the front pages and in the headlines. They need to be on everyone's agendas all the time. In many respects, their strategy has succeeded so far in securing that. So ISIS wants us to think that ISIS has arrived in America, and so does Pamela Geller. So please, let's not give the El Baghdadis or the Pamela Gellers or ISIS or the American Freedom Defense Initiative the attention and the credibility they so desperately long for. Instead, let's support the American Muslim community and the international Muslim community in combating a group led by a former Iraq war detainee who is terrorizing thousands more Muslims worldwide than non-Muslims. And let's work together as a unified society to address the real, present, and urgent issues that are threatening us all.